Hello everyone, I'm Ksenia Melnikova and I'm working as a project manager in Samsung Research Russia. So right now in Samsung Research Russia we have a lot of projects associated with AI, artificial intelligence. And right now it's so big that we decided to tell you how we manage this kind of process, how we develop our AI models and how to control your models in your everyday development. Let's start. So first of all, I will tell you about the process and why is it important and why do we speak about model reproducibility. Then we'll talk about model life cycle and the system management for it. And then I will suggest you some tools and I will tell you how to check if your, if your process is good or not and what is missing. So let's go to the first page. First of all, why do we have to establish a process one by one steps? It's important because your process is a main communication. Uh, it's a main uh, mean of communication that you need to establish inside your team to make it more efficient and effective. If you will have established process, it will give you a lot of success in the future. And why do we track experiments? would you ask me probably and why do we need reproducibility because in a big company when you work inside team it's hard to reproduce experiments and it's hard to make it one more time to show your customer or to try it one more time also you need to track experiments because it's a lot of things to track and you can just have it inside your head you cannot just make it if you don't have a special system to track everything that you want so what exactly is a process in a Samsung? Let's talk about it from the first step, planning. First step planning is about more about like project management. It's about making your goals clear. It's about making your goals clear to a customer and to your team members. It's about making a task list, making a special requirements. Uh, it's about project management, as I said. You should write risk down there and uh, everything that is inside your project to establish it. Then when we have a clear goals, we can go to the second step. Second step is data processing. What's going on here? Let's see. First, we need to collect data. First of all, we need to know where to get the data either we have to collect it by ourselves manually or we should take it outside our team like we take it from a customer or we take it from internet or we buy the data set somewhere uh, so first of all we need to decide where to get it then we can prepare the data uh, what does it mean to prepare it means to clear to find features that we need to find labels that we need then we need to analyze data and what is missing inside. Then when we analyze the data and we understood that everything is good or not, like if it's good, we can go to the next stage. If it's not, we can go to the previous sub stages. But when we are done and when we are ready to make experiments, we can go to the code preparation stage. Here we make a model, we make an architecture for the neural networks and we make approaches that we want to try next in our models. Uh, then when we are ready with this, we can go and train it and then to evaluate it with the special metrics that we set it up here on the first planning stage. When we evaluated it and if we're not satisfied, on the first iteration of the cycle, we're never satisfied with this. I think you know what I mean. And if we're not satisfied, we have to hypertune and some changes um, should be done here. So when we are ready and when the evaluation process is finished and we are satisfied with the result, we can test the model and then we should decide either we should collect more data to make our model more stable or more uh, better with the results or we can manage it to the further stages like we can go and discuss it with our customer again or we can go and give it to the product to the final product that will be uh, tested by customers for example so we can do whatever we want with this 
So as you can see, it's a lot of things to track here, right? A lot of like in here, a lot of cycles, a lot of steps have to be done one and one, one and one. Um, we need to manage it somehow. So we decided to find how to manage it. And there is a concept which is called Model Lifecycle Management System concept. Uh, it means that we should cover every stage of our process with some kind of model that can support us and that can track everything that we need. First of all, we need a product lifecycle management model because this model will help you to organize your team members and organize your task and roles and responsibilities and everything. Next module that we need is data management. It's all about data. It's all about the versions of data that we have because iterations of data are a lot. Have you, You've seen it on the previous slide. And um, to track everything that's going on here, we need a special tools and special model. Next model that I want to tell you about is configuration management model. Uh, this module is about storing information about your model. <laughs> uh, like experience tracking is here. You should track all the environment things that you need to reproduce it uh, again on the other machine, for example. You should make a review and code versions here also. So this one is pretty big one. You should track a lot of stuff here. The last one is more like not official module. You don't have to cover it with special tools, but it's a module that will help you to understand how communication in your company goes, how it goes like between your team members. It consider all the emails, all the reporting. So you should also consider this module, even though it's not clearly outside this picture, like it's not clear, clearly in the process, but it's a mean of how you do this process. Next, um, let's talk about what we did in Samsung to understand how good is our process already is and uh, how to make it better, how we can improve it. And uh, we started to think about it only last year. We didn't have an official process provided by our headquarter. So we decided to check it by ourselves and let's see what was the results. Uh, first of all, uh, we started from the product lifecycle management module. This module, as I told you, will help you to organize your team members between each other and to organize your project. To understand how it's planning right now, I mean in 2019, last year, uh, I asked our engineers uh, which systems do you use currently. And it appears that there is Jira for task tracking and also Confluence for some wiki info sharing or some organization moments. Some people do scheduling there, some people do task tracking also there in Confluence. And it's pretty great that there are a lot of people who use it, but still there are people who use EDC. So what does it mean EDC? I found out that it's chat in Telegram or any other messengers that you have or like, for example, Slack, maybe. Uh, it's also memorizing the task in the head or like talking it with your manager orally. So it doesn't work this way in the big companies because we are easy to lose or to forget our task. So if, if it's not written somewhere, we can say that there is no task because there is no responsibility of making it, right? So to improve this state, from the last year, we decided to make some changes. We decided to uh, promote more systems like Jira and Confluence to our teams for task tracking. And we decided to promote more Kanban approaches, Scrum or TDSP. So Scrum is an easy way to track your task. It's a board, like you can use a full process, but we use only board to track the task. Uh, it's a great way to visualize the tasks and it's a great way to find clear responsibility. And it also make your team understand what other team members are doing currently, which will improve their um, productivity because they will understand that they are not only one who is working. From Scrum, we took uh, task decomposition and 
Um, sometimes we make a sprint planning, but not really strict. Uh, and also we took uh, daily meetings for some teams. Uh, it's not suitable for every team here because not every team need uh, everyday stand-ups, but you should track what's going on inside your team by making uh, meetings. Maybe you can do it twice a week or once a week or whatever, whatever you like. Uh, TDSP is a process that was a pro that was proposed by Microsoft in 2016, and uh, if you have a huge team of data scientists, you can try to use this one. But it has a lot of uh, formalization and a lot of documentation, so maybe it will not be suitable for you. But if you are interested in this topic, you should definitely check it out. The main point of this slide and main point for 2020 and further years is to make the previous stage that I showed you a clear and um, very, very clear for everyone in your team. So let's go to the next one, uh, data management module. Um, so as I told you, it should be versionized, the data should be versionized and the data should be accessible to everyone in the team. Let's see how it was one year ago uh, inside our few of our teams who are making an AI models. First of all, I asked them where do they store data? And it appeared that many of them store it on the local server or on the customer server, but also many, many people, like uh, one third of all respondents said that they have a lot of data versions on the local PC which is not really good because other team members, they do not have access to your data versions. So you can make a complicated versionized list or you can even manually track it, but you will not be able to access it, which is totally wrong for our reproducibility process. Um, then I asked them, uh, which tools do they use for versions control? And uh, first of all, of course, TensorBoard is one of the most popular here because it's one of the oldest one. Uh, it visualizes your logs, but it's very, very slow. So maybe it's not the best tool for versionizing data. Also, some people are using um, Excel and some, as you see, uh, some Confluence pages. It's also manual, so it takes a lot of time to write it down by your hands. It's not very convenient and it's definitely not automatization. Uh, some people also do not track their models and their data at all, which was very surprising for me. So for the next year, we found a very, very useful tool, which is called DVC. It's actually data version control tool. So this is a, a tool that works like this. It takes your data and it make like you make changes to your data and then there those changes are sent to a version system so you don't have to store all the data and all the versions it just stores cache that stores the changes so we don't take ma much storage of yours you don't have to buy additional disks for storaging which is really great uh, the key point of this slide is if you are going to find out what is your like, uh, what is your weak points of uh, data sets tra tracking, you should understand that it should be tracked by everyone, and everyone should have access to any version of data anytime. The last one uh, is uh, the biggest one, I would say, um, <clears throat> module. It tracks a lot of uh, interesting things. Um, let's see what is it. For example, it should be model code. It should be trained models by themselves. It should be metrics that you agreed with your customer, for example, that you're making a model with some kind of prediction accuracy or performance time, for example. And also it should track hyper parameters that you were putting in to understand which experiment is better or not. Also to reproduce all your models somewhere else, it's better to track your environment artifacts like programming languages, everything that you have about your leaves and packages. Some examples are also shown here. 
So to find out how good is our current process of tracking all those things that I listed above is um, we, I also ask our engineers how, how do they do this right now? I mean, one year ago, I remind you that all this data is one year ago, right now it's better. So about code versioning, everybody do it. Nobody said that they do not track code, which is really, really important and which is great. So everybody are using GitHub or GitLab or anything like this. You can use your code version control. Um, like it doesn't matter which system do you use. The main point is to use it and use it automatically. Um, then I asked them uh, if they track artifacts that I told you about. And I found out that um, many people, they track it through TensorBoard. And I already told you that it's a little bit heavy and a little bit slow. So it stops you from making a lot of experiments right now. Uh, many people use um, manual tracking, like as I told you in data version in same as here. Excel and Confluence, they make some scripts that make, they make a lot of scripts by themselves, which also takes a lot of time for developing and do not making uh, model reproducibility easier. And only a sm small, small amount of people, they track their environment and artifacts and metrics in special tools like Omniboard and Socrate and Amplflow. Uh, why should we track it is, of course, because if you're tracking it manually, it takes a lot of time, it's a risk of wrong input, and uh, there is no visualization, it's hard to compare experiments, it's like really, really inconvenient, and you should do something to automate it, because if you're not automating it, it's really time consuming, and if it's time consuming, you should pay more, and your customer sometimes doesn't want to pay you more. Uh, because it's first of all it's business so to find out like why people do not use all those automatic tools I thought maybe they just don't know about it maybe it's just something new that just appeared on the market and I made a list of tools that are saying that they are automate your process um, I also added here a popular tensor board to see if it's really popular or is it my engineers only do this. Uh, so I found out that mostly people do not know about the tools that exist on the market. See, all this blue is I don't know, I've never heard about this. Even if they heard about it, they've never tried it. See the orange bars? They've never tried it. So if they didn't try it, maybe it's it's not bad right so we should try it so <laughs> how to find which tool do we try because we cannot use all of them it's crazy right so i decided to make a report here uh, i made i found some tools uh, some of them are open source tools and some of them are enterprise tools you can go to the links official links here if you're interested in it to find out for yourself I also made a type in here. If you need some some kind of type only for one model, you can use one of them. So entire life cycle is for the whole life cycle. Management for experiments is for the third module that I told you, configuration model. And data versioning is, of course, for data model. So let's see um, the features that I found. If you need like, uh, as I told you, some full life cycle and more versioning. If you need version data and notebooks and model and everything, you can use uh, enterprise tools because they have more features here. But also if you have open source tools or open source abilities, you should try the open source tools and to combine it to make a perfect system. It's also possible. For example, you can take a DVC for your data management model and add some MLflow or a Sacred and Omri board for your configuration model. So you can visualize here the metrics and here you can track your data version. Um, I cannot suggest you to make like to choose this tool or this because it's based on your team um, wishes like what do they want how do they want to be managed you should try it by yourself 
But I can suggest you our way of uh, making the best practice for you. See here. So for planning, we will continue to use Jira for task tracking and confluence for sharing information. It's a good ability uh, for everyone to organize their work. Uh, for data versioning, I will suggest you to use DVC because DVC is a great tool and we tried it and it actually works. I can really recommend it to you. Then we have a GitHub where we store the code. DVC is actually easy to integrate with GitHub. Like when you use DVC, it uh, is combined with GitHub. So you can see which code did you execute with this kind of data. Then for the visualization, we use Sacred plus Omniboard. Uh, Sacred is a management for experiment system. It store all your experiments and log all your metrics and parameters in special database called MongoDB. Uh, you can store there everything you want because you can do it manually. And then Omniboard is for visualization. So if you have still have a lot of for example, reports about your work, Omniboard is a great visualization for your reports. So you don't have to make many reports to your manager, for example, if you're a data scientist, because uh, you can just show Omniboard to your manager and he will, he will see which work did you do, how many experiments did you run today, and how many were successful and how many were not. So for the testing, we didn't have any automatic tools right now, but this is our plan to improve this area and make some kind of CI system for ML and AI development uh, till the, the end of this year. So, when you're uh, starting and if you are inspired <laughs> to make this kind of system uh, or you already have something but you don't know how to improve it, uh, I made a checklist for you. Here you can see which uh, problems do you have and which not. This is like a perfect model lifecycle management system. And here is a checker. If you answer every item yes, you can point it with three points. If you are saying partly yes, it's two points. And if you are saying no, it's only one point, sorry. <laughs> so you should answer all these questions and then rate it with the points and then you can sum up everything and understand which level of maturity of your process and model lifecycle management system do you have. Also here you can find what is a weak points. So for example, you can have a great product lifecycle management module, but you're not good at here, like at those two. That doesn't mean that your model will be reproducible. It doesn't mean you have a convenient way of developing. Maybe you can make your time shorter. So please check it out. You can also uh, send me results here in the comments to this video if you're interested. Um, so I hope you enjoyed my talk. I hope that you will start to make your own model lifecycle management system. It will definitely make your development process comfortable. It will faster your commercialization cycle and the communication between your team members will be better, the reproducibility will be better, and I mean everything will be really better if you will try to do one of those concepts here. So uh, if you still have some questions or you want to contact me or on you don't have like if you have any suggestions how to improve my life cycle or you want to ask me something, you can text me here. Here's my email. Thank you. See you. <laughs>